everyone welcome back to my channel uh, today we're doing a travel vlog and the country I chose is Turkey so let's get started Turkey is a large peninsula that acts as a bridge between two continents of Europe and Asia Turkey is surrounded by the by three sides on the Black Sea the Mediterranean Sea and the Aegean Sea now Turkey is a Mediterranean heaven surrounded by beaches mountains archaeological and historical sites as well as traditional folk dances, Mediterranean food, and Bosphorus cruises. Now let's talk about the history of Turkey. So in the 6th century, 400 years after the collapse of the Zangnu dynasty, the leadership of the Turkic people went to Goturks. And the Goturks were like the first people to write an old runic script called the Orkan script. Byzantine Empire starts with beginnings in the early 330s when the Emperor Constantine split the Roman Empire into the western and eastern part. The most important legacy of the Byzantine Empire is the preservation of the Greek and Roman civilizations during the Middle Now Byzantine Empire is blended with the Christian religious beliefs uh, with the Greek science, philosophy, art and literature. Now the central feature of the Byzantine Empire was the Orthodox Christianity. So they really believed in the hierarchies and the status. They believed in marriage, celibacy, and chastity, and they really wanted everyone to respect that. Now, Osman I, son of Arthur Ghazi, he ruled in the 1300s, and he is basically known as the founder of the Ottoman Empire. And now during his reign, he conquered the neighboring regions ruled by the Seljuk dynasty. So he was a very important person. And the second one is Suleiman the Magnificent. He's a very famous, uh, like, uh, he was a famous sultan at that time. And during his reign uh, from like 1520 to 66, I think 1566, um, he, the Turkey was a great political power at that time and he had conquered many, many regions nearby. Uh, he also built a lot of mosques and uh, historical places that we see today in the modern Turkey. So he was a very influential leader and that's why he was known as Suleiman the Magnificent at that time. In August 2014, uh, the Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan, he won the first presidential election and became the president of Turkey. In uh, June 2018, he was re-elected for a five-year term. And recently, he's uh, also been um, established as a third presidential candidate in the elections that are to follow on 28th May 2023. Istanbul. Now, Istanbul has many names. Uh, Istanbul, as, as we all know, it was known as Constantinople during the Ottoman period. It was also known as Anatolia at the time where there was the Byzantine Empire and, you know, the Seljuk dynasty. So, Turkey, also known as Turkey, uh, it was basically, it's, most, it's the worst, seventh largest city in the world. And it is the most populated city of Turkey, uh, with over 15 million people residing there. And it is the most touristy place, like, you know, a lot of tourists visit the place all year round. Um, now, Turkey is one of the most populated European cities. And it is also like, uh, because of the Bosphorus Strait, it, it links the, the Asia to Europe. So it is one of the links of that as well. And also, the, uh, in the Sultanahmet area of uh, Istanbul, you do see like this uh, Roman era hippodrome where chariot races used to happen. We also see like a lot of uh, Christian mosaics and of course the Byzantine era Hagia Sophia with the 6th century dome. So there's a lot of historical and architectural influence. If you are like an archaeological major or if you love history and ancient buildings, you will see from Roman architecture to Greek philosophies and Greek architecture, you will also see Egyptian obelisk somewhere in Turkey. So um, it's an archaeological heaven, like I said, and I'm really into like uh, ancient buildings and everything. So I love the the history, historical influence in Istanbul. Istanbul is beautiful that way, and I think that's one of the reasons it is visited by so many tourists all around the year. Now the very the most famous street uh, in Istanbul is in that Taksim Square, and it's Istiklal Street. We've all heard about it. Uh, so Istiklal Street is uh, famous for many, many, many restaurants uh, all over and they have cinemas, they have uh, clubs and they have live music going on. It's a, one of the busiest cities in Istanbul and it's crowded with tourists all year round. 
there's also a red tram like an like an ancient red tram uh, seen uh, striding along there and uh, it's a, it's a it's a beautiful place i mean you would you would just walk along uh, it, it i think it reaches the galata tower like the whole street it's a long street so you can uh, you know check out the, the the cinemas you can check out the architecture you can check out a lot of things over there. it's compared to the 5th avenue in new york city and oxford street in london now the top places to visit on istiklal street includes sisik bashi a flower passage we have the whirling dervish area we also have the majestic cinema the atlas arcade the pandora bookstore and we also have a vintage red tram that you can ride around um, the istiklal street also we do have this restaurant sarim rajasi which uh, is a very famous restaurant for traditional turkish sweet delights now the blue mosque also known as the sultan ahmed mosque is a very famous grand mosque in istanbul it's uh, the dome is seen from anywhere in istanbul it was built in 1660 and it is very famous because of the blue tiles and the mosaics being used inside the mosque as well as the blue paint used at the top of the dome its kulia contains ahmed's tomb a madrasa and hospice and its blue hand painted tiles at night are like littered with like lights um and it looks just amazing and beautiful um the mosque also has five main domes six minarets and eight secondary domes Hagia Sophia now Hagia Sophia is the UNESCO's world heritage site in Istanbul now the site of the Hagia Sophia was a cathedral uh, Christian cathedral known as Megali Ecclesia which was commissioned by the first Christian Roman emperor Constantine 1 which was before that a pagan temple Now built between 532 and 537, Hagia Sophia, also known as Hagia Sophia, Holy Wisdom, is a brilliant Byzantine architecture and art. So it was the main uh, church uh, during the Byzantine Empire, and it was the main grand mosque during the Ottoman period, which is like uh, 1453 onwards. Now the Grand Hagia Sophia is um, a major structure. Um, and cultural and historical site in Istanbul and uh, it was built three times by the Roman empire it was finally built in 537 AD which is you know the final reconstruction of it now the topkapi palace one of my favorite places in uh, to visit in Istanbul Turkey is also known as the Canon Gate Palace and this was basically the residence of the sultans and nowadays it's like one of the most visited um it's like an ancient archaeological as well as a uh, historical culturally uh, magnificent as well as a museum uh, uh, you know one of the largest museums in Istanbul Turkey and so it is one of the most beautiful places to visit you have to see it because it's huge and there's so many different rooms where you can see so many different artifacts and there's so much history that you get to see and learn It was also the main administrative center during the Ottoman period and all the sultans like I said resided over there. It was built by Mehmed uh, in 1459 and uh, now the Topkapi Palace has four main courtyards and so the women used to live in the harem while the wazirs like uh, they top officials uh, at that time they used to hold a lot of meetings in the imperial uh, council building. Mm -hmm. Now after the Sultanate Empire reign ended in 1923 the Turkey's Ministry and Cultural Tourism they made a uh, Topkapi Palace into a museum and it's the grand museum in Istanbul and it can be visited with a small like a price you can visit Now the Topkapi Museum it holds a lot of uh, artifacts like Ottoman clothing armor uh, you know manuscripts Now this is heavily guarded by the military Turkish military guards and it is known as the UNESCO World Heritage Site from 1985 onwards. Another more, very interesting um, uh, place to visit is the Galata Tower and it is basically was built in 1349. Uh, it is about over 200 feet tall and it is basically initially it was a, like a defense tower built during the you know the world wars. and now it's just like a place where you can just climb up to the top and see the magnificent and amazing 360 degree panoramic view of the city Istanbul 
so it's a must visit and uh, most of the tourists they they you know they pay us uh, like a small amount of turkish lira and they go up all the way and see the view and it's amazing like the view is just breathtaking now if you're a tourist and you have a limited time period but you want to see all the museums in, in istanbul city then you can get a museum pass and with that pass you can visit 12 museums for 700 turkish lira and it's around 10,500 Pakistani rupee right now um, and you can like visit all of these museums together with that pass you don't have to buy separate passes for them that also includes the Galata Tower because Galata Tower is also a museum it does have some artifacts in it mm. now let's talk about Grand Bazaar since I am confessions of a shopaholic I love shopping um, Grand Bazaar is one of the like the world's largest and oldest covered markets in the world and it is basically an area of 61 covered streets with more than 4,000 shops. Uh, you can buy like uh, from Turkish pure silver to like Turkish lamps, Turkish glasses, um, rugs and carpets and so many different things. You can also buy sweets I think from there. So um, this is an area of like 30,700 meters square and is visited by 250,000 to 400,000 people daily. And it is like in 2014, it was like the most popular and the most like number one place for like shopping in the world with like 900 or 90,000 people, you know, appearing in those uh, in that Grand Bazaar annually. So it is a very, very popular place in Istanbul. And if you are a tourist in Turkey, you have to visit the Grand Bazaar because it's just like the most amazing place, like more like, an, like more like an heritage site, you know, because it's an ancient Grand Bazaar. Like this was like probably one of the first bazaars of the world, you know, during the Byzantine period or the Constantinople period in like 1400s, where they probably trading was happening and they probably had these clothing shops, and like uh, it was probably used for like um, you know. Con between continent trading and everything so you have to visit this place and it is very really well kept and it's uh, you can get anything you need from these you know 4,000 shops and it probably it's gonna take like a lot of time to visit those shops and if you are a shopaholic like me you will love it because there's so much variety and you get to see everything and you get to buy everything in one place uh, in Istanbul if you are running short of time and if you don't uh, like if you don't have a lot of time to visit the malls you can visit the Grand Bazaar, you would get everything cultural and traditional, uh, you know, if you want to buy anything like souvenirs. And Now the Grand Bazaar is like open on weekdays from 9am to 7pm. I think Sunday it's closed, so make sure you go around at that time and um, make the most of it. Like, or if you are into the archaeological stuff, like this place is very close to the uh, Sultanahmet area, so you can take a tram from there and then take a stop to the Grand Bazaar and so that way you can complete the entire tour together and I actually done that so I can suggest that to you and it's a lot cheaper to travel by metro and tram it's a lot faster as well like the buses will take longer because Istanbul is a very busy city so you know it takes a lot of time if you travel the metro it will just take five minutes or ten minutes right so it saves a lot of time as well if you are like visiting Istanbul for like two days you need to like uh, you know budget your trip also you need to like make sure that you know you are getting enough time to visit all these places because if you're going to talk about palace it will take you the whole day literally and like grand bazaar it can take you the whole day as well so if you want to spend more time in, in in the places and you want to visit the places like properly then you need to save time in transport right Another one of my favorite uh, things to do in Istanbul is the Bosphorus cruise. Now the Bosphorus uh, connects the uh, Black Sea to the uh, Mediterranean Sea and therefore it's a very important shipping route for uh, Turkey, for Istanbul as well. So it's a very important port city there. And so you can easily take a ferry or like a yacht and you can take a day cruise or a Bosphorus night cruise with dinner. It depends on the amount of time you have and what you want to do over there. I love the day tour because you can see such amazing like uh, you know the palaces and so there's so much to view in at the day in the daytime there's just beautiful uh, modern buildings and modern houses like around this Besiktas area it's called Besiktas you know and it's one of the most uh, populated and the most like expensive areas 
uh, in Istanbul to live. So they have like beautiful houses around that uh, Bosphorus River. Also, you get to see the Dol Hamshe Palace, which is one of the largest palaces in Istanbul. And it's a must. You can also get a like a day pass to visit that palace as well. Now, the day cruise is like you get some drinks and you get to see those you know, magnificent views and you get to meet people over there. And it's like, it's a fun uh, thing to do, if you, especially if you're visiting with family and friends, it will be a lot of fun visiting, like just taking a day cruise around the Bosphorus Strait. Um, I think it's, now if you are like a very touristy person and you love traveling by metro and tram, which I love, right? because we don't have metro in Pakistan. So what I did was I took the tram and you can also take the funicular F1. It basically, wherever you are in Istanbul, it will reach, you just have to take the Kabata Sphere and will make you reach that Kabataz area, which is the pier area. You climb down the bridge and you reach that pier area where you can see all these yachts and boats. And with 50 lira, you can just take a small day pass for two, three hours and uh, see everything on the Bosphorus cruise. That is a, a nice budgeted way of traveling as well. And it's a fun way, you know, because you get to like, go in the metro and you get to like, uh, you know, reach the Kabataz pier. And then one more amazing thing that you get to do in Istanbul, which I love because I'm a very, uh, I love music and dancing. You have to visit uh, this place uh, in, uh, it's called uh, Sarkasi area, where you basically get to see these, uh, there's a theater over there and it's, uh, you get to see the twirling Darvesh dances and the Russian dances and the folklore Turkish dances. It's a show. And you can like ask your hotel to book you one of those whirling dervish dances and the must, must visit. I would say it's a must visit because my family, we loved it. Like it was so nice. Like the dervish dance was so like, it's a Sufi traditional dance. So it's just, it was so mesmerizing. Like for like 10, 15 minutes, you're just in some other world and you it's a very spiritual experience if you're really into that and the folk dances are amazing uh, you can't film the dervish dance but you can like take a like pictures and, and a video of the the other russian dances with their costumes and their moves it's amazing it's beautiful it's in some it's a nice small theater where you get to sit and ex uh, experience the whole thing it's amazing i love it now um, the dolma bahasha palace which is located on the besiktas district of the uh, you know bosphorus strait in istanbul it's basically one of the largest palaces in istanbul and it was a very important uh, place for the administrative meetings in during the ottoman period from like 18 from i think 1500s to 1800s and then 1909 to 1922 so um, now the obelisk of Theodosius is the ancient Egyptian obelisk uh, of the Pharaoh Thutmose III and it was built by the Roman Emperor at that time, it was uh, Theodosius I in the 4th century AD. Now Hammam or the Turkish bath is one of the most amazing things that you can also do in Istanbul. So it is like a public bath that you can take. Um, and it's like with steam and you know you can use some uh, cleansers and exfoliants it can exfoliate your body there it's an amazing experience it's very new and very cultural thing in the muslim world uh, and it was basically uh, adopted from a roman bath experience now german fountain is also one of the most amazing places to see in istanbul it is a gazebo fountain it was built in germany and then it was um, like bought piece by piece in 1900s to uh, to Byzantine area. At that time, it was Byzantine era. It was probably in Anatolia at that time, and it's so it's a Byzantine architecture in that fountain. It has like these domes, and uh, now the Byzantine style German fountain is uh, it has an octagonal dome with like eight marble columns, and the interior of the dome is like you know with golden mosaics. Now, Antalya is uh, Turkey's resort city with the yachts, beaches, and uh, it's basically a link to the Mediterranean Sea. It's also called the Turquoise Coast for it's because of its blue waters, and it is flanked by large, like amazing hotels in the region. This is a very beachy area, so a lot of tourists all over the world come from all over the world to visit these beaches. Now, these beaches, some of the beaches are surrounded by mountains. Now, the Turkish mountains are not as tall as uh, Pakistan's uh, northern areas, but they are a beauty because you get to have the beach area with small little mountains around and the view is just breathtaking, right? 
Now we do have the the famous attractions in Antalya includes the beaches of course, but we have the Izutuzu beach which is like uh, the turtle beach and so you get to see the turtles at night. Uh, we also have the Olympic Ferric, uh, Olympus Ferric which is like the cable car ride and it takes you to the like the Mount Olympus which is like 2300 meters tall and we also get to you can also do like paragliding uh, from there so it's one of the most amazing uh, touristy things to do in Antalya now there are also Juden waterfalls which are like three different types of waterfalls in the northeast of Antalya and uh, the lower Juden waterfalls did directly into the Mediterranean Sea so it's an amazing um, like a view of the waterfalls that you get to see and there's also Kilishi. Kilishi is the historic city center of Antalya. It dates back to 18th and 19th centuries and uh, you know it was also built during the Byzantine, then Seljuk, then Ottoman area. So it, uh, it defines the history of Turkey. Now Hadrian's Gate is like the gateway entry to the ancient city of Antalya. Uh, and uh, basically it was constructed by the Roman Emperor Hadrian and at that time it was like uh, one of the beautiful ancient architectural sites to visit in Antalya. Now another beautiful place to visit in Antalya is the Kara Ali Ologlo Park which is uh, an amazing place for a harbour view. You can also take a drink um, and sit near the harbour, just beautiful, enjoy the beautiful view of the Konyalti beach and cliffs as well as the Taurus mountains. There's also this uh, great glass elevator and it takes you from the highest point of the city of Antalya to the straight down to the marina and the beachy area. It's, it's free so there's a lot of line at that time but it's a must see if you are visiting Antalya. Now Izmir is the third largest city in Turkey uh, after Istanbul and Ankara. It has over 3 million in people living over there. And it is uh, one of the cultural and archaeological sites in, uh, in Turkey. So the first place that you visit in Izmir is the Konak Square. It is very famous for the clock tower which was built in 1901. It is a very famous and very well like photo photographed place where people take lots of pictures and videos because like millions of pigeons come over there and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful view where you get to feed the pigeons as well. Now the most visited places are the ancient Smyrna, the Roman Agora and the Kedafikile Castle. Um, so these are the places that you should visit. There's also an archaeological museum where there's a large display of artifacts from Greek and Roman eras. Now Azenkak area is the heart of the city. It is the center of the entertainment. You have the hotels and nightclubs and the restaurants over there. So of course if you're visiting Izmir, you have to go to this uh, place for the entertainment around the city. Uh, now we also have Pamukkale. Now Pamukkale is like 230 kilometers from Izmir but it is a must a uh, place you must see. Pamukkale is a traveler's delight and a geological phenomena. Now Pamukkale is, a, is a, located in the western side of the Turkey and it is uh, known for its uh, mineral laden rich thermal waters that slope down the steep slopes. Now there's also Kemeralti Bazaar next to the Konak Square where the pigeons were there and uh, that place is a very historic place with cafes and restaurants over there if you like historical places. There's also Hizar Mosque, which is dates back to the 16th century. You get to see the mosque as well. Uh, then we have also Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is an ancient Roman city ruins. Now, the ruins are very well preserved, and it's a must see um, in uh, if you are visiting Izmir because it is about 80 kilometers from Izmir, but that's like a daytime you can visit the place. Now, Ephesus has like beautiful terrace houses and two huge grand theaters. It's a very well-preserved uh, Greek city and very ancient Greek city which was a very important Greek city at that time and it was also a very important trading place for the Mediterranean region. Throughout history, Ephesus survived multiple attacks and it was conquered by many different uh, conquerors. Now another one of the most uh, beautiful uh, places to visit in Turkey is Cappadocia. Now, Cappadocia is it's very famous for the unique rock formations and natural uh, beauty uh, that you get to see in Turkey. Um, these are basically called these cone-shaped rock mountains which are also known as fairy chimneys. And you also get to have uh, a hot air balloon ride which is very, very famous these days. Lots of tourists gather around. The best time to go is from March to May because it's not very windy at that time. Otherwise, your hot air balloon ride might get canceled. And you get to see an amazing view of Cappadocia. 
and it is one of the most fun things to do over there. Now let's talk about Mediterranean cuisine. So I mean, we have to talk about Turkish food. It's very famous all around the world. The Mediterranean diet is considered one of, considered one of the best diets in the world. So, but we're going to talk about sweets first. So I love baklava. Baklava is also famous in the in the Arabic part of the world, but this baklava is a little bit different. I like the Turkish baklava a little bit more. It's a it's a, it's a phyllo pastry filled with nuts, pistachios, almonds, with lots of honey and it's yummy you just have to try it so but when we talk about food the most famous food in turkey is the donut kebab now you have to try donut kebab they are the rotating grilled meat and this is like lamb meat i think if you love if you're a meat lover and if you love different kebabs and you know different uh, grilled meats like you know over here in pakistan we have afghani meats i love it so you have to try it the second most uh, fun uh, like was uh, the, the lahma shu. Lahma shu is like a Turkish pizza, but it is not filled with the regular Italian mozzarella cheese. It's basically filled with minced meat, onions, and spices and some peppers, and it's it's made in a very different way. It's a very lunch item, like a snack, and people tend to love eating that. Another dish uh, is dolma. Dolma is like grape leaves with stuffed rice, meat, some spices, and lemon. And it's one of the most popular dishes in Turkey. Another interesting dish is meze. Now meze is like an appetizer with like salads, pickles, roasted vegetables, with skewers of chicken and lamb. And a lot of people uh, order meze. It's, it's, it's a very different dish and you get to enjoy the delicacy there. Then we also have borek. Now borek is like a pie or a pastry filled with like a filo like dough with Turkish white cheese or feta cheese with minced meat. We have mename. Mename is like the traditional scrambled eggs with like some onions, spices and peppers with tomatoes. It's like a little bit traditional that way. So I think also made in Pakistan that way, you know, we have those, we don't have scrambled eggs, but we do have the omelette concept with onions, tomatoes and chilies. So it's similar to that. We also have uh, pilau. Now pilau is like Indian rice with spices and vegetables. Um, there's also manti. Now manti is a pastry stuffed with lamb meat with rich yogurt and uh, it's seasoned with onions and spices. Now we have kofte. Kofte are meatballs of beef or lamb uh, with onions and spices and they're usually cooked over wood fire. They are simply delicious. If you don't like lamb meat and beef and you want to try and you don't like minced meat then you should have a uh, lufa. Lufa is like an oily fish uh, and it is prepared very well with pepper and salt and some vegetables and it's available in most of the places, in, uh, especially in Istanbul. And we also have, we have a sweet tooth, we have lokum. Lokum is like a jelly with like dry fruits like hazelnut and walnuts and it is like dipped with like coconut sugar. It's really yummy and it's, it's, it's very colorful, it has different colors and a lot of people buy it over there. Now Turkish tea or K is like a strong black tea and it is basically made in large pots. It's brewed uh, like for a long time, it's very strong. And they don't serve it with milk like Pakistan. They, you know, it's just black tea, and it's reached. It's served in those Turkish beautiful glasses, which I got as well. They are, I just love like drinking Turkish tea in those glasses. It gives me a very Turkish effect. Also, Turkish coffee is very famous, uh, and but it's also very strongly brewed coffee. It's very like bitter. So if you're not a bitter coffee lover, you might not like the taste. It's very different from the Arabic coffee. Uh, black coffee it is also very different from the uh, you know American black coffee it has a different taste but uh, it is usually had all over Turkey and usually have with food also and some of the sweets like lokum is usually had with coffee other drinks include Iran which is like a milkshake with yogurt and water with a lot of foam and they also have uh, Raki which is like an alcoholic beverage uh, used uh, it is basically inspired from the Ottoman era and by at that time the Greeks also uh, used this drink a lot and then we also have Turkish ice cream. Now Turkish ice cream is not anything different from the normal vanilla and chocolate ice cream. But like the way the Turkish vendors like ice cream vendors, they, they sell it, you know, they, they dance around the cone and they play with it and they, they're trying to give you the cone and they take it back. It's so much fun and, and a lot of like people love that experience. 
uh, and you will see these uh, vendors I mean I've seen it on Taksim Square in Istanbul that is a very populated place there are certain places that I have to mention that I have forgotten to mention uh, like there is uh, Bodrum Bodrum has an amazing nightlife and there are lots of beaches over there if you are a beach lover you must visit Bodrum in Turkey as well and so that's it um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do please do like share subscribe uh, next week I'll come up with another country where you can visit and I'll give you some history about it, also some places to visit and of course the, the delicate cuisine that they have. So take care.